it seems like a uh, less of a price to pay than losing life yourself. So Justin apparently is not undefeated, and Strunk is. Michael Strunk is one of one, two, three, four, five players that are undefeated heading into round seven. Right, why don't you read those? Um, that would be, I don't know the first names right. for all of them, but Amp Rondon, Alex Bertoncini, Corey McDuffie, um, Griffin Corrigan, Griffin Corrigan, right, and uh, Michael Strunk. Right, so Alex gave his rug deck to Griffin Corrigan, who, and now both of those guys are undefeated. <laughs> Uh, McDuffie, what was McDuffie playing? We saw him earlier, wasn't it? Uh, was that the was that round one versus Laskin? Um, we did. Uh, you mean round two? All right, round two. Well, the first round we watched. Was that who was that? What was it? Corey McDuffie? When did we watch? We him? saw him round two. Round two? I like, think so. Okay. Yeah. Against Laskin. Then. Yeah, I think okay. so. That's what I thought. I couldn't remember, but for sure. So. He's playing the, the Dark Blade. Not Darker Blade, but I think Dark Blade. Because yeah, right. he's still got the uh, Squadron Hawks. Blackest Knight. Not Blackest Knight, because he has the Squadron Hawks. It's just, it's just regular Dark Blade. New Dark Blade, if you want to include new Phyrexia cards. So Cloak leads off with a Celestial Colony, and Shrunk starts with a Creeping Tarpet. Looks like he's trying to decide which land he wants to play here. Goes with a Sea Chrome Coast and Squadron Hawk. This is looking awful familiar. It not, is, like not, I said, the not, old guard. No, I mean uh, from last night. <laughs> oh, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Legacy Challenge players, your pairings are being posted on the DTH board on blue paper. Players, they apparently have a miniature Papa John's around here because I see keep seeing tiny Papa John's boxes. Yeah, it must be a little tiny Papa John's. So, second turn, Black Cleave Cliffs and the Duress from Strunk. Justin says, "All right, here we go. See my island, Squadron Hawk, Squadron Hawk, Preordain, Ink Moth Nexus, Sword of Feast and Famine, and Jace the Mind Sculptor." Pretty so, much. I mean, this is a, it's a nice choice here because you you want to take this Jace or the Sword. Yeah. I, I think to take the sword. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, depends on what he has in his hand. If he right. has an Inquisition. Well, yeah. If well, he if has he has an Inquisition, he'd just double him up right now, you know? Yeah. But, like, uh, he's going to take the sword. It seems like the Jace could be a bigger threat, though, to him uh, getting his combo off. Could be. Preordained from Strunk, who draws a looks like a spell sky, I want to say. I think so. Um, and something else. He doesn't want to know. Put both on the bottom? Yep. Yep. So draws a planes. Where it's not a planes. No. <laughs> Certainly looked like a planes for a second. I'm like, wait a second, he's not the one playing wait. So at five one no. at five one we have AJ Soccer, Nate Pease, Drew Levin, Edgar Flores, Tim Landale, Jay Cuvelier, and Kit Holland. Justin Cloak, who we're watching right now, is, is uh, actually 5-0 and 1. So he's, he has, he's undefeated, but he hasn't uh, won every round either. So Justin gets in with his Squadron Hawk, plays a preordain of his own. I'd love to see uh, more mental misstep going on. <laughs> we're going to see that plenty tomorrow. Uh, not that I say it, not that I disagree with you. Passes the turn back to Michael. Legacy Challenge players, your actual pairings are about to be posted. <laughs> Please return to the board to find your actual seats. Halimar Depths from Mike. I, I like the I like the uh, the Splinter Twin deck a lot. Yeah, me too. I at first I didn't like it, but I didn't believe in it. I'm surprised by how resilient it is. Same here. I feel exactly the same way. I was kind of like, ah, oh, cute. Yeah, exactly. But seeing it actually showing up in a deck, it's kind of kind of cool. Cute with teeth. Yeah. So, this is a turn to, to Justin, and Justin is uh, looks like he's debating on whether he wants to play a Tectonic Edge or a Ink Moth Nexus, and he went with the Nexus. So 
So he has the option here if he wants to play a Jace, but uh, Strunk is representing Mana Leak and or Spell Pierce. So Justin just goes with Squadron Hawk. Second one. And he'll represent Mana Leak. <laughs> Touche, Justin. Touche. Passes the turn, and Michael and Tank passes the turn after uh, dropping a creeping tarpet. I was about to say, not literally in the tank, as you can see from the wall, he's in an unfinished basement. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Justin trying to decide what he wants to do here. So it looks like he's going to get in before playing a land, maybe. No? No, he plays a Tectonic Edge. Edge is away. The red source on Strunk's side of the board. The uh, Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah, really smart of him to leave that, uh, um, leave that mountain in his hand. Yeah. So it looks like, you know, he's it looks hurting like he's a lot more for red. True that. True that indeed. I meant true dat, sorry. True dat indeed. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he really wants to use that mana for something first, so let's see what he's doing. Oh no, he just figure out what color to float. I mean like yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, even if he has nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he should always float something. And uh And he's gonna use it. Goes with a uh, dismember. On one of the squadron hawks. And minus five, minus five on that hawk. Seems a little overkill, but. That kills him a lot. <laughs> yeah. He's really dead. Every feather plucked individually. Yeah. I'm sure it's exactly what just happened. Dismembered. Defeathered. No. Jace the Mind Sculptor from Strunk after dropping his mountain and a <coughs> mana leak from Justin. Yep. Passes the turn. Which allows him to play his own Jace. Yep. Which Strunk knows he has because he uh, he saw his hand earlier. So in with the Squadron Hawk. And here comes Jace, I would think. And a Colonnade, maybe? I, don't know, I didn't see if he had like a Spell Pierce or something in hand to maybe keep mana open for. He's definitely got Colonnade, obviously. It's right there. So it looks like he's gone. We have one spot remaining. And $10 Jace. Draft. Like draft. Please come up to the side of his face and get registered. Okay, so I see uh, land, dismember land. So Seacrone Coast, dismember planes, I believe is what I see. Looks like he's putting the, some of the lands back. This would be a really bad time for Michael to play Liliana and uh, search. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> I don't think that's his plan. Nah. He does have it into the royal there, and then just drew a... Another dismember, I believe? Or is that a despise? I had trouble telling. Uh, activate. Kill Jace. Unless you've got a condemn, or... Yeah, and he does. Oh, dismember, that'll work. I going to say he doesn't play condemn, does he? He's not playing condemn. He plays dismember, though, and that will, uh... Kill the tar pit. But also, notably, uh... Drop Justin to 16. Yeah, but he got a land destruction spell in there for he did. one mana. Yeah, he I'd did. pay four life for that. I think I would too. I think that's a good deal. Also that's saved his Jace. Very true. I'd pay four life for that. Yeah. So on board on Mike, Michael's side, we have two Creeping Tar Pits, a Mountain, and a Halimar Depths, all tapped. Justin has Jace the Mind Sculptor on five counters now after a Fate Seal of himself, was it? Or was it uh, did he, yeah, did he scry. Scry? scry? Yeah. So, uh, so he's got a Jace on five counters and a Squadron Hawk. And it uh, looks like, I want to say he has six lands. He's, yeah, he's got six lands in play. Just tapped five of them to animate the colonnade and get in for five along with the uh, squadron hawk. Colonnade and squadron hawk in for five. So it puts Michael to ten. To the people who get really upset about people using fate seal when they do it to themselves, all I have to say is, scry me a river. Very nice. So I had to get one in there. Players with ten dollar draft, number four. And then there's a spell skate. 
played a, a Black Leap Cliffs, came in to play tapped, and then tapped for two for a spell strike. And Justin now with a commanding position on the board right now. That Jace is just really good. Uh, I mean, really, really helping Justin get pretty much anything he needs. I guess with Jace does, but yeah. All right, Justin taps four, five, animate colonnade, in for five. And now Michael has something to say about it. A dismember of his own. He does pay two life for that. Yeah, two life and black and a colorless. But again, it deals with it, which is right. what took, he needed to do yeah, there. Took out the colonnade, so he got the land destruction spell. A little cheaper on life. Michael's turn right now, he has five untapped lands and a spell skite in play. Passes the turn. Justin with a Jace on five counters and a Squadron Hawk and uh, six lands in play. And Justin looks like he uh, goes with a brainstorm. Like and I saw really threat light here. Yeah, I, I see Batter Skull there. I see I saw Tectonic Edge Island Batter Skull off of that brainstorm. All three of which he kept. I believe he probably put back some squadron hawks I think he still had left in his hand. Ten dollar boots and grabs to number four. Come on up to the main event stage, please. Ten dollar boots and grabs number four to the main event stage, please. Yeah, he can't into the royal that land. It looked like he, he like stared at the end of the royal in his hand for a second. Like, I could. Oh, I can't. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, taking out those red sources seems like a uh, pretty good play. And there comes a battle, Batter Skull. And there's Rashad. And Rashad. Into the Royal. Or the other. On the a Batter Skull. Yep. Oh, no, he did bounce the, uh, the germ. Interesting. I was going to say, I don't think he runs Doomblade, does he? I guess he gets the most value if he kicks it into the royal on him trying to equip it. You know what I mean? If he then bounces it. What do you mean? So he goes to equip it on the squadron hawk right now, and then he bounces. Oh, does he have a second into the royal? Yeah, and he okay, bounces the batter skull in response, and then he has to pay another ten mana to use it again. Yeah. Or five mana, I guess, because it gets the living weapon back, but still. And there's the batter skull on the uh, the squadron hawk. Didn't really have. Doesn't look like he has a response to that. No. I would have bounced in response to the equip because because um, now the squadron hawk attacks untapped. I don't know if it's it's not really that relevant, but still, it's just another thing that you he's, can prevent. He's doing something here. He's got mana leaf mana up now. Justin does. Okay. Flashes flash. in deceiver X. Okay. Yeah, we'll tap the guy in response. Okay, that's not terrible. All he needs to do now is not draw his Splinter Twin. Yeah, and a red source? And a red source. Oh, he has the red source. Oh, there it is. Okay, Your didn't see that. He just played it, that's why. Alex Davis, come on up to the main event stage. Your draft is with on you. Strunk's got some serious decisions to make here. He's on the brink. He's going to pass the turn. Gets in on the Jace for one, at least. Justin's going to keep brainstorming off of Jace, just getting all that card advantage. 
And now Strunk's going to have to attempt to into, into the Royal, the Squadron Hawk, I imagine. He can't block with the Spell Spade. Given the, you know, given the amount of time this game's taken, I would, I would maybe, I don't know. He can, he can always top deck his, his answer. So he's gonna, he's not gonna kick, or no, he's gonna attempt to go for the third. That's a good one. And then he can still kick into the royal if he has to. So that's good. I forgot he drew the, uh, the, the go for the throat this turn. So he does have a number of plays he can make right now. Opponent doesn't seem to have much in his hand, but I can't see everything. I think that might resolve. Yep, sure does. I would post combat. I would, I would bounce and then replay the batter stall with Jace. Or he can do that and equip it to a better creature. Fair enough. Again, that's why I'm on this side of the. Uh, the camera. Mike's going to take himself to six with that fetch land. God, he needs a Splinter Twin right now. That's all he needs right now is a Splinter Twin. If he can pull that off, it'll be so huge. So Justin is tapped out. Justin pretty much has the win on the board in a turn or two. Ink Moth Nexus won't get him there, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> he really needs it right now. Kicks into the Royal on the Hawk, or on, on the Hawk, right? Draws off of that. He gets one more draw. I think he, he might have drew a probe there. And he draws the Splinter Twin. Unbelievable. Splinter Twin comes down off the top of the deck thanks to a well-timed into the Royal. And he takes game one. In amazing fashion. It is too bad Joey left and missed that. You just missed the top deck of the tournament. Wait, I get to hear about it, right? Yes, you do. So, uh... You know, he was in a bad way, as you can see, uh, the games uh, won there. Yeah. Uh, end of turn, so Justin plays a Squadron Hawk, equips a Batter Skull, mm -hmm. after his Hawk gets go for the throated, right? Okay. Plays a second Hawk, equips it. Strunk, end of turn, kicks into the Royal. Uh -huh. Last card in his hand, right? Right. He draws a card off it, I didn't even notice what it was, it might have been Deceiver XR. Okay. Untaps, draws Splinter Twin. Oh, wow. Plays it wins. So, because he was, because Justin was tapped out. Wow, yeah. So that was like what he needed to do right there. I mean, yeah. Justin would have taken him to one the next turn. So he technically had two turns. Right. But, man, like, uh, he yeah. needed it right there. That's pretty impressive. Because, I mean, his opponent could have just, or Justin could have just fate sealed him the next turn. Yeah. You know, tacked, fate seal, make sure you don't have it. Right. And, and then, and then, you know, win. So that was really, like, I would say, the last turn he had to yeah, get that that's combo. that's pretty nuts. And I he guess got that it. shows you the strength of the combo. The combo when, can just come out of nowhere. Yeah, it, I think that's the big thing. And we saw that earlier with uh, Harrison, I think, kind of, where, uh, you know, he seemed like he was in a bad situation. He just played really tight to live, and then until he got to the point where he could resolve his combo and win. Yeah. And draw, you know, draw into it, get the right cards, and win. <laughs> that was an impressive win for Michael Strong. Yeah, I must have been literally seconds behind. Drinking all this water and Red Bull and stuff is kind of <laughs> making me have to get up a lot, if you know what I mean. But uh, let's take a look at the sideboards. Yes. Um, so uh, Justin's got Flash Freeze. I suspect that comes in. I don't know though. Because it's literally only Splinter Twin. Yeah, it doesn't seem worth it. So, me. yeah, I mean, it's literally the only red card in the deck. S sort of War and Peace, mate, now. Batter Skull. Does he really need another Batter Skull? Like, I don't know. It doesn't. I think that seems like it's there against something Celestial very Purge. aggressive. Yeah. Celestial Purge definitely comes yeah, in. Celestial Purge for sure. 
I think that may be it, though. Might be it. Divine Offering takes care of Spellskite. Yeah. I mean, that's maybe, maybe worth that's the only other really I don't know if you really want to bring in one card or you know, divine offering. You've got three copies of divine offering. I don't know if it's really worth bringing it in just for spell skites. Yeah, but no, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be totally. I wrong. think you're right um, because it is just spell skite, right? You know that he would have to deal with. And then on the on Michael's side. He's got a Consecrated Sphinx, Combust, which is there. That's another, that's another answer right now in standard for uh, the Splinter Twin combo because it can't be countered and can't be prevented. Right. So that's like that's a huge, like a very, very good answer, and I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that yeah. today. Um, it can't... Uh, but that's, you know... That he's, he doesn't need that, obviously, against, against Cold Blade. He's, I'm just saying, like, he's got Combust. It's something that I is cool, to bring though, up. yeah. It's great um, against the mirror. You know, if you're playing the mirror with this, yeah. Right, so he's got a uh, Consecrated Sphinx, Combust, Pyroclasm, Calcite Snapper, Shatter, and Twisted Image. So, to me, it looks like he's got the Shatters for the equipment, and then maybe a Consecrated Sphinx. Because you, know, you don't think the be... Snappers come in? Ma yeah, maybe the Snappers come in too. So I think they just give him a little more pressure early. Um, you know, kills Squadron Hawks and punishes them bad for not blocking. So, in the meantime, game's gotten started. Justin leads with a, a colonnade. Michael goes with a creeping tar pit, and Justin plays an island in the Stoneforge Mystic for Sword of Feast and Famine. Mm -hmm. Duress from Michael off his Black Lead Cliffs. He sees a pair of Mana Leaks, a pair of Jaces, the Sword, and a um, Secret Post. I think that's the first time I ever did that. Takes the Sword. Sword, is, sword seems to be the most immediate threat here. Uh, he needs to draw into some land, into a land naturally to even play the Jace. Right, knowing, I mean, that's the thing I think about these, oh wow, Manalik, Manalik, Jace, Jace. Yeah, wow. and, and the Seacrum Coast. And he takes the sword. Yeah, I mean, that's the cool thing and about And he draws the fourth land, so. Sorry, what were you going to say? Keep okay. No, I just, it's cool. I'm just saying, like, this is why Inquisition was so good. Was against Stoneforge Mystic being able to take the sword that they just tutored for. Michael Walsh. Justin Helbig to the vent stage, please. It's true. Well, Michael has the Splinter Twin in his hand. Does he have the Deceiver also? It's such a fast combo if it goes unanswered. Yeah. Like the fact that you can just go end of turn Deceiver, next turn play the Splinter Twin. Right, that's win. the whole thing. And, and uh, you know, uh, Tony L. Yates on Twitter just said about Consume the Meek being a possible. Uh, a possible answer to the, the combo because obviously all your guys cost uh, nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> they all cost less than three. So you consume the meek instant speed after they make infinite guys. But the problem is, it's not. Uh, it can happen even faster than that. It can ha yeah. It, it can happen way quicker than that. So it is a good answer if you've got six lands basically because a lot of times they're going to tap down one of your lands. Right. Uh, if they're if they're expecting sort of. The, I mean, uh, consume the meek. Right. They'll which. At this point, maybe they're not because it's it's a fresh deck, and that's not necessarily one of the answers that people have been playing to it. But uh, if you have five lands out and they expect consume the meek, they're just going to play Deceiver XR, tap one of your lands, and then go off on their turn when you don't have the mana to play consume the meek. Of course, that's again only if they're expecting it, and they may not be. Well, there's the XR goes straight to the top. So he's got the combo then. Yep. He doesn't get to draw it because there's the Halimar deaths. Right, but I mean, he's. he's but got if he has a player name, right. he can. Or like a Taxian Probe or something. But, uh, he's, got, he's got an Exarch in his hand, too. Looks like he has the combo in his hand, but he doesn't have a second red source. That's his problem. Oh, right, okay. Batter Skull, viled in off of the Stone Forge Mystic. So is it that confusing when you play Stone Forge Mystic to say she tutored something up? Because tutors, you know, 
referring to demonic tutor. Right. And if that's not a that's not a current card, are people that confused? <laughs> Constructed a sword from its stone forge and, and then, then yeah. mystically so uh, played it. <laughs> but other than that, passage of turns and Justin. Whoa. Lots of flashing over there. Uh, Sorry for any of you who have epilepsy. Spell Skite he just drew and he gets in with Batter Skull and uh, Stone Forge. And he says, Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. It's like before, before combat, I'm going to play Deceiver XR. Do you have a response? Answer to that question is, you bet. <laughs> yeah, at this point, because he, he knows he's got it. He's got the scalding tarn sitting there, so he has the second red source. Right. And he's got a mount in his hand too. So. Several second red sources available to him. So, Why did he tap? Yeah, the, I think uh, he just was trying to represent that he's attacking. Didn't even think about. Oh wait, does he have vigilance? Okay. Why would he let his opponent not attack with Stone Forge? Because, you know, he backed them up. He wasn't doing it during combat. He backed them up. If Justin can change his mind. I know, but why did, I mean, I'm saying, like, why didn't he let him attack? And oh, then I see what you're saying. Oh, did he bring that down and block? You know what I mean? Right. He wouldn't trade, but still. He can violin another equipment right now. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know what good it's going to do, but it's just like... Good point. He tapped it because he tapped the... Uh, he played Deceiver Exarch. I thought you were talking about the uh, Rashad token attacking. Token oh, attacking. he tapped... He okay, tapped it yeah, with Deceiver point, Exarch. Yeah, that's why I was confused for a second. So I was like, what did he tap? No, but I'm just wondering why... No, I know what you're saying. Oh, but if he tapped the Brenna from attacking, that's fine. But and if he has the combo... I don't know. Whatever. That's why. That's what it was. But he has the combo, so why... It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter you know? I don't know. Maybe he wants him to think he doesn't have the combo. Right. Anyway, he plays a mountain and uh, plays a spell skite, which is, I believe, on a stack still, uh, with a mana leak. And Michael pays for the mana leak. He's trying to draw out the counter spells that he's trying to do. And it's working. If that's yes, what he's trying is. to do, that's what you So, mana leak again. It's going to take him an extra turn. Yeah. I believe Alex 7 out. He just made some sort of gesture here. I kind of missed it because I, I, I thought he house. had a slip in his hand. So. Our players are married for the next round and it's posted. One party player is not married for the next round and it's posted. So he definitely got those uh, mana leagues out of Justin's hand. <laughs> okay. Which I think he knew they were there for a while, right? Oh, yeah. They've been there all game. That's right. So now he mana leaks the mana leak. And he draws out a spell pierce. There we go. There you go. That's one way to get three counter spells out of Justin's yeah. hand so you can get your combo off the next turn. Now he's gonna now he could always go for the throw of his guy, but I think right. he has seven lands at this point. So he can just combo, play both pieces in one turn and just win. And he has a second X Arc, is that he has one in his hand, I'm pretty sure. Remember I think he put it on top with the uh, Halamar decks. Right. saw Mary run by. Top eight with Zoo. Oh, right. And DC. Yeah. Bouncing the Exarch with Jace. Beats in for five there. Batters in. Yep. Now, now he does. Now, Justin is, again, representing a counterspell. But Justin, with three counterspells out of his hand, is a very small chance that he actually has the counter spell, so we'll see. And he's going to pass the turn. Okay, so he's setting up. I wouldn't have allowed him to draw another card there. I would have tried to just go for it, but that's just me. And that's yeah, you, you may have a plan that we're just, you know, he sees something that we don't 
uh, that we're not seeing. Maybe you're supposed to draw out as many counter spells as possible. And it looks like, uh, you know, Justin doesn't have one. It looks like he's got ward, sort of War and Peace, I think, in his hand. Uh, Jace and something else. I want to say Spell Scout or something, but I'm not 100% sure on that. He doesn't have Spell Scout because it's not in his list. <laughs> Oh, it's Sword of War and Peace, Jace, and is it, still I can't tell what it is, it seems to very quickly always flip by the one card that I can't see what it is. I he just, just threw a dead. Yeah. It's pretty nasty. What do you, what do you think the chances are he keeps the day here? I don't know. Maybe casts yeah. it a little? Probably casts it a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to just cast this for a little bit. I would cast it. He's trying to draw out a counter spell here. So he can get his day to resolve. Yeah. Seems like a good plan. At this point, like facing down two Exarchs, he's he's gotta feel like Michael has it after all that bait, counter spell baiting. Celestial Purge for it. Yeah, he's like, it goes on there, then you're going to purge it, and I'm going to respond yeah, by... Yeah, that was uh, bad. He should have really Day of judgment it. That's what I was... Yeah. He had the day. He should have done it. In response, I'm going to use his ability a million times, and right. I'm going to win. He's like, I've got it right now. You can purge it all you want. At the end of your purge resolving, I have a million guys. Or however many, whatever arbitrary number. So wait a minute, he's letting him back up? I don't understand that. Unless he's actually saying I'm putting this many into play. I'm not real sure what just happened there. He pretty much played Celestial Purge like it was a counter spell. You know what I mean? Does he? I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get the timing on that. Like basically, he said, "I'm gonna play Splinter Twin," and Justin played Celestial Purge in response. It looked like. Yeah, that. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, because he really he. If is there? I'm, I'm gonna ask Glenn. Okay. Glenn. Is there ever an opportunity to um, purge a Splinter Twin before they can respond by making a million dudes? Because that's kind of what just happened. Uh, when so, the Deceiver taps, mm -hmm. you can purge the Splinter Twin at that point, and that will prevent it's before the other Deceiver comes into play, so they can't right. tap again. Right. So you can't make any more. Okay. You can't stop them from making one copy, but you can stop them from making any more and, than one. Okay. okay. What, lo what it looked like just happened, though, is he plays Splinter Twin. Justin looks like he responds with Celestial Purge before the Splinter Twin even goes on. Can't do that. Yeah, it looked like... Then he put it on there, and he said, okay, so you're hitting the Twin. In response, it he, like, taps it like he's going to make it something. And it looks like Michael just let him back up and kill it, it the way you did, the way you said. So he just ended up with one token. I, I think there was probably an instance of shortcutting. Yeah, it was just very... The player was just basically saying, like, resolve... Right. So he can't just put the thing on the stack a bunch of times in response? No, because no, it's tapped. Yeah. Tap once you tap once, 
you need another way to untap. Right. If, like if you played another card that was just like untap target creature, then you could respond by going off. But you need that other card. Oh, okay. Right, because it's like tapped. another X for example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That, that, right. That, 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 so he, he ended up taking, sense. taking right. the game 